I'm Suzanne, I'm in Litchfield Diocese in three rural parishes and I'm Head of Rural Ministries for New Wine. Hi, I'm Linda Maslin and I lead Fountains Church Bradford, a city centre resource church. Hi, I'm Dennis Adide, I lead St Stephen's Church in Shepherd's Bush. I'm also the urban rep for London and West. Hi, I'm Nikki Sims. I'm based in Chelmsford. I lead a church called Skylark Church and a network of churches, missions and charities called Skylark International. And I'm Richard Moy. I'm down in London looking after the New Wine region in the half of the South East. I'm Kate Wharton. Um, I am a vicar in Liverpool and I'm one of the assistant national leaders of New Wine. I'm Richard Penniston, Vicar of St Chad's in Romilly, which is in Stockport, and a Regional Director for the North West. So welcome everybody. It's an absolute joy to be having this conversation with you today. Really looking forward to uh, what we're going to be able to talk about. Um, I'm sure we've got enough to talk about for several hours. We're going to try and just do it in one. Um, and we're just looking at um, what's next for the church. Uh, and I wanted to start by asking you all a question. Uh, so we'll go around in the, the same order as we just introduced ourselves. But the question is this, imagine it's your church's annual vision meeting in 2022. You're looking back on this crazy couple of years. What do you say? Good evening and uh, welcome to our annual vision meeting for St John's. Uh, I really want to thank you for your connection in the ministry and the vision that we set last year in trying to reach out to our communities to maintain those uh, connections that have been so important, particularly intentionally staying connected to those that we connected with uh, through the online things that we found that we were having to do uh, during the pandemic in 2020, which seems like a lifetime ago. But we know that that one event seismically shifted our expectations and the means through which um, we were able to be a church and to reach out to our communities. We're really uh, amazed by what God has done in the last couple of years. The dream that we had back in uh, 2020 to set up a wellbeing hub and satellites around Oswald Street is really established and uh, the vision is growing. Uh, to continue to support and to relate to those in our communities, particularly around mental health and raising awareness. And uh, that's now in its second year of ministering and connecting with the most vulnerable amongst us. We're also partnering with other organisations within the community, which is just really strengthening our mission and vision. Our life groups, uh, which started as a result, again, of that online presence, have duplicated into smaller gatherings and are continuing in their search to go deeper with God and what it means to be a disciple of Jesus during these changing and almost discontinuous season of change that we find ourselves in. And uh, we look forward to 2023 with an excitement of the expectation of all that God is yet to do in and through us as we seek to minister to those around us. Well, for me, I think it would be focusing around um, the fact that we've been able to establish really quickly a pattern and a rhythm of prayer. And that has sustained us through the kind of um, COVID period and coming out the other side and provided a really good kind of bedrock for us to build the rest of our ministries around and about. I think I would also be thrown to the fact that we've uh, had loads of uh, opportunities that have come about because we've been live on the internet, which we weren't before. So lots of people beginning to connect with us and uh, a, a real sense that we're going to continue with that as we move into whatever the new uh, brings to us. Delighted that we've been able to um, connect and make new disciples through that. Uh, and also delighted that we've been able to start things uh, which have been like little small communities. So our small groups, we're a really new church. So this would only be like our second year of operation. Um, and we just started to think about small groups, but COVID and really pushed us into doing that sooner and those have become real hives of community activity um yeah i think that's probably me um we are uh we would have had small groups but for covid uh, our church was uh, beginning a discipling journey and 
I think what's been good to see over the last year is people finding and falling in love with Jesus afresh. Mm -hmm. So uh, 2022 would be thanking God for that number increasing uh, and for um, people in the church deepening in faith. And I'd be saying something like, uh, we just want to give God thanks for uh, allowing us to create a space for our youth and uh, young adults um, in, in the local area who have never felt that this was a place they could come and worship. Mm -hmm. I'd be thanking God for the different spaces for people to encounter and engage with him, for the new folks who have uh, been able to step forward into not just disciple making, but leading, preaching, getting involved and being confident mm -hmm. in their faith. And uh, our fingers mm -hmm. seeping into the local community to really make Shepherd's Bush known for Jesus and not the shopping center that we mm. play home to also. So that's that's our gratitude for 2022. And then looking forward would be to just build on that and connect mm. us even more with the mm. churches in the area, connect us even more with the transitory things that happen because we are literally a transport kind of hub place. You can get to us from anywhere, you can get to anywhere from us. So rather than have county lines for for drug runners, actually, we want to have a county line for people mm -hmm. to go out and spread mm -hmm. um, the good news to their workplaces, to their to their spaces, and 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 whatever that would look like uh, by 2025, 2026. Well, for us, looking back in 2020, at the very beginning of the year, we shared vision with the church that we felt that the time for focusing on the peripheral things like premises, like strategies, like systems, church growth and church health, all of which are important, um, had gone. And that actually that God was asking us to make a vision of Jesus, which sounds so simple, no gimmicks, no frills, a vision of Jesus, learning to, um, to know him, to love him, to love like him, to follow him and to share him. And we had no idea what 2020 would bring, the global pandemic that has changed everything subsequently. But we don't see that vision changing anytime soon. The danger is that we will revert to our old ways, uh, back to how things were, the old wineskin for doing things. But we know that we are now in a brave new world. And what we have seen over the last couple of years is that we have truly had an opportunity to be the church like never before. And we've spoken about what would happen if there was a time where we couldn't meet together. And what we saw is that actually uh, we learned to worship for ourselves at home. We learned to press into the word of God. We learned to reach out and love our community in new and exciting ways. And so we're excited to move forward in the strength of that, but we are going to continue to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, because to make a vision of anything else right now in this rapidly changing world would be to do him a disservice. Let justice flow like rivers. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> I mean, this might just be me, but... Uh, having watched an emotional film on Netflix this morning, but my sense is that this move of God that's going on now is is a move of justice, and we've connected mm. to the fact we're part of a global church in a way that we've never done before, a, a historic mm. church. Uh, we've seen recession in our country. We've seen poverty mm. increase in our country. We've seen a split between people in our country. We've seen the aftermath of Brexit in our country. We've seen us remembering climate change and forgetting climate change and we've seen but somehow in the middle of it as a church nationally we've begun to sparkle a little bit more we've mm. been on the side of the poor mm. we've been on the side of the broken we've been on the side of people who have been forgotten about we've remembered stories we've chosen to ignore in the past and God's been humbling us he's been breaking us that old song break our hearts with the things that break mm -hmm. yours has been coming true intercession has mm -hmm. increased in us and I'm, I'm proud of that as i look out at our church and our churches across our movement mm -hmm. and but my message this year is that there's only one way you either get in the river further or you mm -hmm. get out the river there's a sense this river's flowing from the temple of god himself and it's going to take you wholeheartedly over a waterfall <laughs> 
or you can go back to paddling on the edges like before but if you're in it you're in it to win it and you're in it with the king my message is stay in it stay on track because the kingdom's coming soon well i feel for my um apcm 2022 i want to get you five to come my guest speakers yeah. <laughs> um i think what i would love to be saying then is uh, what an amazing year we've had um and mm. it's so great to have some of you here for your first annual vision meeting and so what the way you've connected with us and come mm. to encounter jesus uh you, for the first time we are just so delighted to have you with us as we look back on the covid pandemic uh it seems a while ago and i love the way we've responded i love the way we've become a praying church the, the church we always wanted to be the church that actually takes mm. prayer and intercession um through realizing our powerlessness when we were in lockdown to realize we need the power of god has has woken mm. us up to the value of finding patterns of praying together which are making such an impact um i also realize looking back now that um, we've become a simpler church, uh, a less cluttered church, a church with less activity and more prayer, more connection, more relationship. And uh, I know some of you miss the things that, you've, that you loved before COVID, but I know that also the time and the space we have for the simplicity of being church is, uh, is something we value and something we can continue with and that, that enabling us to be who we're called to be in this season. So that's my summary of what I wanna say in 2022. Wow, thank you. I'm inspired by those um, statements. Yeah, and, and it's good, isn't it? I guess as we're in the middle of something very difficult and very fast changing to, it, of course, we can't possibly know what 2022 is going to look like, but it's perhaps helpful for us to take ourselves out of where we currently are and, uh, and think about that. So at the moment, we all, you, you pretty much all reference this. So much is changing, has changed, is going to change lots of that has been incredibly hard but there's also opportunity isn't there when there's change there, there's opportunity and so i'm just thinking how we make the most of that you know for lots of us in our churches even before the pandemic which feels like it's been going on about 10 years but it's in fact only a few months some of our churches were struggling with finance or with attendance or with all kinds of different issues uh, there were things we might have wanted to do differently but it was hard to do that when we were in the in the run of things so now, I guess my question is, is for all of us, how do we make the most of the opportunity that we've got in terms of the things we might want to stop and, and not do again? Mm -hmm. The things we might want to restart in this moment that we want to take forward. You know, how do, we, how do we roll with some of that opportunity? I think, it was, hey, um, I, I think that's so helpful. I, one of the first tasks of a leader is to define reality um, mm -hmm. and reality is really hard for us to accept a lot of the time and you, you've referenced some of the you know the, the negative trends in church uh, decline mm. and all this sort of stuff and the illusion that we maintain is if we just worked a bit harder or prayed a little bit more mm. then it'd be okay and actually you know quite a few of our churches in new wine family are doing all right you know you, mm. you get a new leader in you often get a bit of growth you plant a resource church like linda's doing and there's some excitement there's some there's some great ministry going on, but actually the big context is, you know, we're faced with a big thing and COVID has given us a chance to say, look, we can't carry on like we are. Uh, enough is enough. There's a, there's, there's a tipping point here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I would definitely agree with that. And I think for mm. us, one of the things mm. that we really want to try and do is uh, put everything back on the table and decide what our negotiables are and what our non-negotiables are mm. and that's that's tricky isn't it because um i think uh, richard you alluded to the fact that sometimes we just become so attached to the way things have always mm. been um because we love our church and we love participating in that but for us mm. one of the things that we would love to see change moving forward is uh, we just we were so intensely busy with activities programs conferences events and what this time has done is enabled us to see that actually sometimes we were just so caught up on this treadmill of, of a very fast paced rhythm as church um, that we weren't really having the opportunity to build meaningful relationships both inside the church, but actually most importantly outside the church with those friends, colleagues, neighbors that we are desperate to reach and, and spend time with and, and demonstrate Jesus to. So we we really want to come back to what are these, what are the bedrocks for us that are non-negotiable and everything else is up for grabs. But that takes courage. 
Yeah, I think I'm in a pretty similar situation. One of the things that um, that we did as as uh, COVID started was to um, to instigate daily prayer, morning and night. And as a church, we've been really working through. I mean, as I say, new church. How do we get a really strong rhythm of prayer that people can join in with? And we had a, a vision that we would have ultimately a 24 seven prayer room running. But as we know, that brings with it all kinds of safeguarding issues and how do you protect your buildings and how do you do all this? And of course, with going online, that all went. So we could do, you know, kind of the patterns of morning and night prayer and invite other people in to join us. Mm -hmm. And in that, you kind of have this sense of going back to the basics. So, you know, others refer to it as, you know, becoming more Jesus centric and, you know, going, mm -hmm. making sure that actually people started to pray in their homes and to read scripture in their homes and to allow God to speak to them in their homes and to recognize that that wasn't far away. And I think for me, you know, as we step forward, I want to keep that as being really central mm -hmm. because the danger is it does become all about the event stuff and all about the program stuff. And we forget that actually this is the bedrock of what we what we do and it's working that stuff through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, Sorry, go on. Um, I think for me it's been really interesting because I um, was only licensed to my post uh, maybe six or seven weeks before lockdown started. So even though I joined a church that wasn't a new church like Linda's, it's a new church to me, new communities, and in a way, what um, the lockdown has done is given that opportunity to actually um, get prayer right to the heart of the church because. Um, the curate who was already in post that I joined as a colleague when I arrived, we'd had conversations before I was licensed about prayer being really important to both of us and how do we get that out to the rest of the church. And then lockdown was imposed. Everything went online and we've done the same as Linda uh, sort of explained that we've started and really established this rhythm of morning and evening prayer which to be honest for the two of us selfishly has been what's sustained us but also has um, gathered the church family in a way uh, that maybe wouldn't have happened in the same way before and I think there's a sense for us as well as others have said of, of going well this is whatever the new normal is but actually we don't want to go back necessarily to what we had before so we're already starting to have those conversations um, what we found here was um i suppose my experience might not be the same for everybody but um the the two-sided coin of the gospel we have is is comfort and discomfort and so mm. the way things were gave a very lovely safety net and a comfortable place for people to just engage but the discomfort and the risky side, the, the unsafe space of going on mission, that was really dim. And um, I think what I found has happened here is actually the space to talk about the cross um, and the reality of what it means to follow Jesus, picking up a cross and following him, uh, mm -hmm. really hit home once we lost the safety net, we lost the the building, we lost the rhythm of how things were before. And actually, I think that probably gives or has given us here the best opportunity um, to, 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 mm -hmm. to go back to first principles and go, this is what the gospel actually means. Mm -hmm. If we are full mm -hmm. in here and are having a laugh and are comfortable and are okay, we're not doing the other side of the coin. Like something's got to, mm -hmm. there's got to be an edgy bit to whatever we do, which, is, which, which will mm -hmm. shake us. And remind us that mm -hmm. we not only are received into a space, mm -hmm. but we have a job. We have a job to do. And um, I suppose that's my my prayer for the time is that we don't mm -hmm. don't waste that opportunity here. And as much as this is going to be a marker for our lifetimes, um, that becomes a marker for our church lifetime to remind ourselves mm -hmm. of this lesson uh, in 2020 to go to the try risk faith space mm -hmm. of mission mm -hmm. and find discipling. And, and the spirit mm. of God there on the edge. Mm. For me, there are many things that resonate with what you guys are saying with, with prayer and, and what Dennis just said about that, that, that bold, boldness and discomfort of the gospel. The thing that the spirit's stirring in me as we're talking is um, we found an, a new uh, cohort within our community, four times the national average of people over 70, 
the vulnerable of those who live alone, those who are elderly and who are particularly vulnerable. And actually the way we've had to use our resources in this season, in our church building, is for those who are not online, for those who are living alone. And I think something that God's broken my heart for has been how we can really continue to, we've, we've always done a lot in that area of ministry, but how can we can take that area of, of loving that, mm. that sector mm. of vulnerable in our society. Um, but also within that, um, quite stirred with evangelism, that we, that isn't just tea and chat and breaking, uh, overcoming loneliness is important, but also introducing to Jesus feels to me like a, an urgency in that, um, that what we, what we move into in the new, uh, it's very easy to think about how we might lose families or children or young people or the outreach things we're doing with the younger generations, but an area where the God's really mm-hmm. palestinal highs is our real intentionality with, with the elderly and the lonely. Uh, can I can I jump in on that? I think yep. you're so right to highlight it. I, I think as clergy who go into nursing homes, uh, we often have a glimpse of society that most people really don't mm. don't see because we sort of hide it away, mm. don't we? I remember when I was on placement years ago, going into uh, a massive, almost industrial care home that was playing Radio One really noisily in the background because that's what the the staff liked, and mm. we went in and did communion with Radio One blasting in the background, and and actually this this hidden poverty that we've got in the country, and we're we're hearing more this week about hidden slavery as well, the ten thousand slaves in Leicester and hundred thousand mm. around the country. I think they're things that God really wants to wake us up to, and I think the care mm. home ministry. It, it's not often the sort of the sexy ministry that, you know, if, if you're looking for a curacy profile as a church leader, mm. for example, you mm. don't go, great, how many care homes do I get into? You're like, mm. you know, what's the youth work going to be like? Or, mm. uh, and actually, these guys are going to graduate soon. Their eternity is, mm. is in, you know, mm. it's, it's there. It's up for grabs. And many mm. of them with the Lord's Prayer or an old hymn can be awakened to yeah. latent faith. And it's, it's just mm-hmm. ripe. It's ripe fields for... Mm a good minister and it must be so on God's heart. Mm. I couldn't agree more. We've had a team going into uh, local residential homes for a few years now and our worship leader has been taking a few musicians in to do a sing-along with um, some of the elderly Mm. residents. And in lockdown, um, one of our pastoral team dropped some care packages into a couple of, um, of the residents and she was blown away because one of the guys was just waiting in reception and he said, well, how come they get it? And I don't. And um, she said, well, they're part of our church family. And he said, <laughs> I'm part of your church family. I am <laughs> coming to those, to those sing, singing sessions every week. And he felt part of our family. It was such an amazing moment for us to realize yeah. that it's never, you never know the kind of the reach or the impact you're having. No. Mm. Yeah. That's that's the really important reminder to us, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I look some of the themes that and the threads that have come out of that. I, I you know I love I love the reminder um, Suzanne of, of prayer and uh, Dennis mm-hmm. being reminded of uh, you know it's not about just being cozy and comfortable in here, mm-hmm. but of being outside. And Nikki, I think you're so right about you know it's all on the table. What are we picking up? What are we not picking up? I guess the challenge. What I what I think as I hear you say that is the challenge is almost who decides those non negotiables because I can see. Mm-hmm that's difficult isn't it mm. of course there is the leader we're saying well this is what i'm sensing but the, the, mm. there might potentially there's this huge pushback from people who say well here's the things i want back again mm. and i guess for us to keep our eye on that you know as we do come out of lockdown and return to in some way into our buildings and into our services the, the pressure perhaps to say let's just do all those things we did before because that's familiar mm. and we want them back mm. okay mm. kate the, we were doing a zoom with church mm. leaders yesterday and they were reporting um, having survey congregations and stuff, people saying, yeah, definitely we should reduce our activity. Um, and then when asked, but which activity should we reduce? It was always, but not not my activity. <laughs> and you, know, you, you end up probably mm. with even more. We, in fact, we did it with our PCC when mm. Dennis was curate. You know, what, what, what should we stop? Uh, and it was like, yeah, we should, we should reduce, but not. And COVID's been such a leveller, hasn't it? Like, mm. what actually is essential? Yeah. When I was a pioneer mm. minister, my mentor is now dean of a cathedral somewhere and he, he said to me look you're basically just there to pray everything mm. else is additional mm. and mm. david i think that's been the revelation for the church hasn't mm. it everything else is additional mm. get a praying in <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah. know oh, absolutely absolutely mm. and we've done a survey that that's been mostly to do with reopening but the next thing i'm thinking of doing is uh, cpas have done a really helpful matrix i'm just looking at it because it's on my notice board behind me but what have we gained but are happy to lose mm. at the end of lockdown what have we gained and want to keep 
what have we lost and don't want back and what have we lost and do want back and it's just a, a mm. four boxes on a page and I think that's a really helpful conversation to be starting to have with people because it, it enables people to identify the loss but also then mm. squarely to look it in the face and say well actually don't let's just restart it for the sake of it. Mm. So on the theme of change moving on to another question so lots of us will have been doing online services or engaging in some way perhaps posting things to people who aren't online you, you know some parts of the media think the church has been closed we obviously know mm. full well that's not been the case but within this we've connected I guess in different ways with lots of new people we've either connected with them because we've done online services and they've just joined in and they it's easier isn't it to join an online mm. service than to walk into a building so we've seen that Perhaps we've connected with them because they're our neighbours down the street and we've had conversations with them we never would have had otherwise. Uh, we know, because statistics show it, that there's been a huge increase in prayer, more people Googling, you know, how do I pray mm. than kind of ever before. Mm. At the same time, though, I, I guess it's the true for you. I know it's true for us here. We've seen people that normally would be in church and we, we don't really know if they are. They're perhaps not engaging mm. online or perhaps not connecting. So there's a huge challenge here, isn't there, about how do we make sure we link in those new people the ones who are interested the ones who are connecting how do we not lose that but equally how do we also not lose those for whom the last few months might have felt quite dry and, and they might not have connected how are we continuing to equip and empower people to continue to make disciples to continue to bring all of that in what does that look like mm. i think inevitably we are going to end up with a hybrid of church aren't we that it maybe is going to be both and rather than either or, because there are people in, um, you know, the, the physically sort of challenged, the disabled uh, group that um, a counterpart of ours, Katie Tupling, advocates for really, really highly, yeah. for whom suddenly because church has intentionally gone online, there are people within our communities who maybe wouldn't have physically been able to attend before that have suddenly become part of our family and we don't want to withdraw from them do we we don't want to say oh you know whenever things are back to normal whatever normal will look like we don't know that oh sorry we're not there for you anymore and so lots of us through the the, the really brilliant cpas uh, webinars that james lawrence has been doing have been given the space to explore what that might look like and i think the challenge for us in rural communities is that we're obviously challenged by um, poor internet access or no internet access um, and lots of other things. And so it's finding, I think, different entry points. And what in this one incident has happened is the bar, the entry bar has been lowered. Mm. And so people can dip their toe in, although we obviously, going back to what Richard was saying earlier, want them to go deeper. Um, and so we've been offering the prayer course online um, which people have really engaged with um, but we won't know necessarily how many people have watched it because you can't look at your watch figures can you because that's a really not helpful rabbit hole to go down mm -hmm. so it's it's uh, an interesting time I think yeah I've got um two two thoughts on this one is um I think six different bible passages this week or things I've read have pointed me to shepherd and god as shepherd and leadership mm. as shepherding and and when we think of this question i just feel personally god is really bringing that that reminder to me um the, the mm. shepherding element of the one who goes after the night the, the one sheep mm. on the 99 and mm. but i think i want to link what we just said about prayer about simplicity about trust is that um one of the things i've learned in in lockdown is that as as leader the 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 loss of seeing and eyeballing my congregation every week um, i mean i can check the stats and there are the measurements of who i'm connecting with has has gone um but i can't uh, count the number of times i've prayed for someone and the holy spirit's just put someone in my heart I think, oh i haven't heard from them or i haven't connected them i've prayed and and i've then bumped into them or my wife's bumped into them walking the dog yeah. locally or mm. i've spoken to someone said oh no i've had a lovely chat with them or they've been joining us mm. so feel part of this is we can we, we need to do more more pastoring uh, through prayer and through trusting God mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and remember as church leaders mm -hmm. I mean my, a mid-sized church it's not all about me the, the, the measurement of connection with with God and church is not how much they've connected with me the leader um, mm -hmm. and and partly the Lord is teaching me to, to yes passionately be called to be a shepherd but also trust that he's the shepherd mm -hmm. 
um, and and take that anxiety to him rather than have because otherwise, I've, I've, if, if post COVID was all about going to find the lost sheep, I'm afraid it wouldn't be 99 to one in our context. <laughs> um, mm. I, we, that could just become another burden and activity. But I feel there's a prayer element to this. Mm. I hope that's not a cop out. I think it's a, mm. what mm. God's calling to me to do. Mm. We had a weird situation here at St Stephen's where um, actually our activities were very limited uh, when I arrived. So before COVID. We actually did very little. We did so little, and so um, uh, when it was okay to open the church for private prayer, um, it was a decision for us whether to open the church for private prayer for the first time in mm. a decade or something like that. Mm. So, yeah. so we we've been able to just incrementally mm. do things from a very small perspective uh, going forward. What's uh, What's good here, and uh, 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 this is a different context, I think, from what most people are going through, is this has given us an opportunity to start new things, and mm. rather than rather than to not uh, to, mm. to reduce on the amount of things that we were already doing, um, and so our mm. question has been, what is the right thing to do um, uh, mm. in this in this space that we now clearly can see other churches um, have been using where we haven't. Personally, there was one Sunday I remember Zoom crashed because loads of churches yeah. across England were using it. It's yeah. so happy. Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> I was so happy that day. I thought, wow, this is what we need to be doing. Let's go and crash the, the, mm-hmm. the Wi Fi because everybody wants to connect with Jesus in one mm-hmm. way. Let, let that mm-hmm. be. Honest. And so, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We were in a similar uh, space, actually, Dennis, because, I mean, we'd heard. I had to hire a space where a church we now do have a building it's a nightclub building that's being refurbished but we've had to move so we had three moves in our first uh well we, we aren't even a year old yet and our fourth was online so we've had to keep transitioning um people along that journey and so um we we didn't have lots of programs and lots of things happening because if we did we would have had to pay for more space and all of that kind of stuff so we were relatively simple as well in terms of you know main kind of Sunday service and then just beginning to grow a few things um, around and about that. The thing that has has, um, been really interesting in that though has been that all of the kind of team, my core team, have got involved in discipling people and that discipleship has continued right the way through lockdown by telephone calls or Zoom calls or whatever and then we went and we took um, a discipleship course online so we used um, start as our our kind of course which is a bit of a yorkshire version of alpha mm-hmm. uh, and but, but, that, yeah, but, that, but that's what really that's worked really well for us and mm-hmm. what, what we found in this discipleship is that people have started to opt in and begin to ask questions as well so um, I've had a couple of really interesting kind of streams of, that start out as messenger and then have ended up as face-to-face conversations of people who are thinking about rejoining church but have been kind of put off because of things in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, you know, I've seen a number of people who are kind of rethinking about that. In fact, my joy the other week was to go to the baptism of one. She'd just come through such a journey. Whilst we've been online, she decided that she wanted to be baptised in the River Wharf down the road. Um, and that, you know, that, that was amazing. And, you know, just really hoping that, you know, that continues to be a stream of fruit for us of the Lord calling back people who have, you know, kind of been, been in faith at some point, got put off for whatever reason, uh, but actually are now restarting to think about where God fits into their lives. Mm. Wow, that's brilliant. Um, I I think that what um, Richard said about trust really resonates with me. Um, we're a fairly big church and um, there are lots of advantages to that. But in a moment like we're just living through at the moment, uh, you realise how much has become very centralised and how much people mm-hmm. are reliant on a, a, a very large core of team who deliver an awful lot of stuff. And Uh, What we've been really encouraged by is that actually, as we've seen that decentralization, you know, forcibly take place, people are really Mm. starting to um, take ownership for loving one another, for pastorally caring for one Mm. another. And Mm. of course, we've had small groups and all of those other kind of discipleship strategies that many of our churches will have. 
Um, but that's been it's been encouraging, but it's also been a real trust exercise because the you know you do wake up in the night thinking about what about those people? I, I don't know if they're connected to me and who's who's looking out for them. They're not in a life group. Um, but I, I do think that prayer and trust is massively important and to know that we've been preparing our people and God's been preparing our people mm. to be the church now. And so um, I hope that some of that decentralization will continue. We don't want to just tighten the reins back and like take control of those things because I think it's so important that mm. each of us takes ownership, not just for our own discipleship journey, but actually bringing others along too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I love that, Nikki. I think that's really, really key, isn't it? And, and you know, for us, that's been something as simple as just having a sort of telephone chain almost. And everybody, you know, mm. particularly some of our more elderly or, or isolated people, just everybody. So I can't phone everybody in the church every week, but but somebody can, uh, mm. you know, and, and, and that kind of thing. And and again, I think that's one of those things, isn't it? That's one of the things that we do want to keep is, is exactly that, isn't it? Is that mm. sense of this isn't just the leader has to do the pastoral care or the leader has to do the connecting mm -hmm. so a really key thing to to keep going forward yeah and and just making the most of that opportunity so many people are hungry at this moment just let's not miss mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. let's not miss that opportunity mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. um and it feels to me at the moment like there are there are lots of things uh, and some of them are directly connected to covid you know some of them are, are as a result of what's happened but some of them just feel like they're around in 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 the atmosphere um and and i'm sure that's not a sort of coincidence to god but they're not directly connected and there's all sorts of things it feels like that the church can speak into and, and needs to speak into at this moment and and there's a few of those that i perhaps want to mention and, and get us to think about um, you know, and in some ways that's about us having a prophetic voice out into society. In some cases, it's about us looking inside our own um, walls as church and, and, and how do we sort of speak into that in terms of justice and all sorts of things. And one of those that I would say, you know, it's not directly connected to COVID, but it just, it's it, it kind of, it's risen up as an issue around the same time. Of course, it's been an issue for mm -hmm. forever. But it happens that, you know, with the mm. killing of George Floyd and the rise of the Black Lives Matter mm. and the campaigning that's happened and the protesting that's happened, it just happens to have been at this same time. Now, that's probably not a coincidence. Perhaps people are mm. in a particular place in their own sort of thinking that, that means that has happened more at the moment. But what, what do we need to do? I mean, this is a massive question. This is ours on its own. I'm not expecting us to like, you know, mm we're just touching on this but we're touching on it because i think it's it's one of the issues as we as we move forward at the moment that is really relevant to to us as church what do we need to be doing what do we need to be saying there's so much internally that needs to happen but equally there's a voice outwards how, how are you guys kind of trying to engage with that i think as it began i was i was really keen that we thought really thoroughly about how we began to begin conversations within our community so uh, bradford's obviously multiracial um society we've had lots of issues in the past uh with racism and um riots and all of those kind of things and thankfully the city has moved on dramatically in all of that um and so i was really um i we held back a couple of weeks while we really thought and prayed through what to do because I didn't want to respond in a tokenistic way, um, mm. but, but really to think through what, how would we begin conversations that we could, you know, really kind of keep going as we build our church and make sure that, you know, in our, in the culture as Fountains develops, that there's no partiality. Now, how do we do that? And so, you know, there's the conversations that we then started were around that. How do we make sure that we've got the right building blocks, the right culture that enables everybody to flourish, no matter, you know, what, what their colour or where they perhaps have come from as they come mm -hmm. into a relationship with God. So that's been the way that we've, we've begun to tackle it. It's just, it's the beginning of a journey though, isn't it? And I think that's what we've, we've mm. had to say is, you know, we're not just going to respond to this individual situation, but we mm. put this situation has made has been a catalyst for us to think about mm -hmm. how do we how do we create something which is which is appropriate mm -hmm. for our city. Mm -hmm. It's that whole um, mm -hmm. uh, comfort discomfort thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, I did, I've been doing a, a sort of a four series podcast with Richard. We just recorded the second one yesterday, 
uh, not yesterday, on Monday, and we've got two more to go. And the, the idea is to encourage people to, to not be afraid of the uncomfortable space. Just because that's mm -hmm. what our gospel teaches us. And like, do not be afraid has got to be the church's mantra, I mm -hmm. think, wanting mm -hmm. this, to, to go mm -hmm. to the place where you wince a little bit uh, and, mm -hmm. and stay and stay enough to, to learn, stay enough to mm -hmm. face the truth, stay enough to engage with not just how you feel, but how the other person feels. And I think mm -hmm. the gospel gives us the resources for that. Uh, in how Jesus invites us into relationship with mm. him. So, uh, mm. I think the opportunity is there. I think the church can, because of, it, because of its reliance on Christ, or it should have a reliance on Christ, it can really go much further than society uh, is able to, at a much faster mm. pace than society is able to, and actually set the pace rather than what has uh, transpired over the years mm. where society is kind of much further ahead. So mm -hmm. I think the do not be afraid line really is pertinent mm -hmm. for the church now. Mm -hmm. And just understanding mm -hmm. the gospel, not as a comforter, but as a discomforter mm -hmm. as well. And that being yeah. the reality of the Christian life. Mm -hmm. That's so rich and helpful. Yeah. 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 Just mm -hmm. a brief encouragement on that. I had, um, uh, oh, got some echo there. I don't know who that, um, I had a, I, I spoke into this um, again, like Linda, I took a couple of weeks to listen, read and recognize I need, mm. I'm, I'm much further back and needing to learn on this one. But I had a, a Zoom call with a group of people in my church, um, all from a, all were white, all from a white majority culture. I think majority were over 60. And um, I was intrigued by what their reflections or their backgrounds on, on racism were. But by taking that, do not be afraid the richness of the conversation and their gratitude that we were addressing the issue and the way they'd struggled and that their fears of the subject and their fears of getting it wrong was just, it was so helpful to take that do not be afraid. This is a safe place where we have shared values, unity under Christ. Um, yeah, I was blown away by the, the fact that what felt to me like a slightly scary thing to do in a mm. sense actually was so rich because I didn't take that mm. being afraid and, and their desire and, gratitude that we were willing to be discomforted on it was so encouraging yeah mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we do have been um speaking up and speaking out um but we've also been uh, adopting that position of of learner um and also just trying to unlearn a lot of things too mm. um i think that's really important and it seems to me that for racism to flourish in our society and in our churches, it flourishes best in the conditions of silence, secrecy and darkness. Yeah. So mm -hmm. however yeah. uncomfortable it feels for mm -hmm. us, we have mm -hmm. got to break open this conversation. And my prayer mm -hmm. and hope is that we as the church with a capital C would be leading the way on this. We, it mm -hmm. feels like often with a lot of things that are happening globally, we, we seem to, um, be playing catch up a lot of the time but mm. God is calling us to be pioneers and to create new culture mm. and um, I, I don't have all the answers I definitely don't but I am really wanting to learn I'm wanting our church to mm. learn I know that part of that is that this just can't be a one-time conversation this has got to be repeated conversation and it needs to be mm clear sustainable quantifiable outcomes and, and action points too um, but without bypassing the biggest part of the process i think which has to be our heart posture repentance uh reconciliation um yeah. and and that's going to be i think mm. that's going to be a lifelong process i i, I really yeah. do um yeah. but we've got to kind of keep on top of it before mm. the tide kind of overtakes us again so mm -hmm. yeah that, that would be my my initial thought yeah. Can I share one just briefly? Yeah. There was one simple mm. moment I realized when this, when I first started following, listening, and engaging with this, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. To, I realized this is a move of the Spirit, not mm. a reaction to culture. And mm -hmm. once I realized this is something God is doing in His church, right. it changed mm. everything for me. Yeah. I was like, okay, Lord, yeah. this is what you're yeah. doing. I'm sorry I'm slow. I'm yeah. sorry I'm behind the mm. curve. I need to learn, but this is you mm. at work. And therefore, I'm yeah. in Jesus. Yeah, I, me, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that reminder. I mean, that's hugely important to us, isn't it? But mm. I, I love that reminder to keep learning. But also, Dennis, I, lo I love that reminder that, it, you know, not just to stop doing this when it's painful, because of course, mm. it's, of course, it's uncomfortable. It's supposed to be. 
Mm. And I think that's the danger sometimes, isn't it? Oh, I don't want to, oh, that's going to, that's going to hurt a bit. I'm not going to go there. Mm. So yeah, thank yeah. you. And I think, and so in, another issue that I want to just move us on to, which I think again, it, because it reminds me, it sort of comes out that it's not, it's not in any way the same, but it, but it sort of reminds me that it's also an uncomfortable conversation is the whole question around mental health. And again, you know, coming out of this, clearly it's an issue in our society anyway, always has been. But but I but I'm really aware that as we come out of lockdown, different people are, are struggling with mental health for all kinds of different reasons. Some of whom mm. uh, had ongoing stuff that's got worse in lockdown, some of whom have, have developed struggles with mental health as a result of the lockdown. Children's mental health is a massive issue mm. at the moment again you know just how how do we connect with that how do we support people in that what does the church have to have to say and and, and offer around that i think it's something that that for us as we began to pray right at the beginning of lockdown something that came through very strongly that there were going to be lots of pieces to pick up after this pastorally and that we the, that in this space we were almost provided with the grace space to tool ourselves up mm. if I can put it this that way to actually prepare for the time that we're in um, that we might not be able to physically be with people and I sort of changed the words the description of it that when that, that right at the beginning it was called um, uh, social distancing but actually we called it we're physically distanced but we're not spiritually and mm. socially distanced so we're actually choosing to engage with the areas that the spirit is actually highlighting to us in advance i mean uh, anxiety disorders as you've already highlighted kate are on the exponential increase and already worse so and so that's why in when we were asked you know what would your vision statement for your church be in 2022 part of mine was this uh, this well-being hub that we're looking to set up in um the town right near to us um, because it will be more accessible to more people out of which there will be um, an Oswestry beam which will be attached to the children's society where there will be um, therapists and counsellors and trained volunteers who will be available and accessible to people but then also satellites out in the rural communities because I think accessibility is a real issue and a big problem we've got in Shropshire is that at the moment, there are two of those centres in Wellington and in Shrewsbury. But in the time of lockdown, they've all gone online. And so it's service offered to the whole of Shropshire. But as soon as the lockdown finishes and at whatever point we can physically meet with people again, that will reduce back. And the, the uptake is already outstripping what's available. So it's been in that position. It's posture, isn't it, is a word that has come to us a lot. Mm. Mm. I don't think we can ever underestimate the power of that crown of thorns, man. Um, mm. <laughs> whenever, whenever the conversation on mental health kicks in, um, I'm just always reminded of that. And I think it's such a gift from the ages uh, mm. for Christ to us uh, to, 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 to sort of be able to speak about it. We've had, because of our context, we're in a very socially deprived area. Um, uh, wealth and poverty really mix in. And so even how we try to do church here, is disrupted by people who are mm. ex exhibiting everything on the spectrum mm. from a stressed out vicar uh, on the mm. morning trying to work out how to begin a service with nobody praying with him or something like that to the mm. person who has just walked off the street and doesn't you know doesn't know to tone down their voice in church mm. or whatever the conversation has been about again that discomfort of loving in that mm. space um to 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 tell the folks here at every opportunity uh, that uh, I, I suppose our savior acknowledges that the thorns that, that, that hamper us, you know, he carries mm -hmm. that for us and love for us has got to look like being, being present, patient uh, there and uh, loving without an expectation to change mm -hmm. the folks who, who rock up and exhibit the wounds that this world has, has inflicted upon them. Mm -hmm. um, we're nowhere near there. We're nowhere near there. And I, I suppose the two things with the, the Black Lives Matter and this are sort of tied in that sense. This is the to the least of these side of things where, you know, we present the crown of thorns every Sunday. and We're going, actually, do you know what? If we don't take this opportunity to strengthen ourselves in going to be with the other, 
um, then mm. we will not show love to those who have been isolated historically, to those who uh, are, are, have not sort of felt the comfort of a physical presence there to remind them that their mm. saviour wears a crown of thorns. Like, and I mm. think that's an important aspect of the gospel for us to embody and, and demonstrate. I hope we do mm. take it up and we embrace the challenge and, and with the access into homes that we're sort of being sort of afforded in this time, are able to give room for a robust conversation, honest conversation, mm. uncomfortable conversation, and a deep commitment mm. to life together. Mm. Good. Yeah. Mm. Very good. I think um, the church has so often uh, been seen as a place of judgment. Um, and even though it may not always have been vocalized, certainly in more charismatic church culture, there's been that um, off limits conversation, I suppose, about, well, if you just prayed harder or well, if I just mm. had more of the Holy Spirit mm. and um, that's just, it's so wrong, isn't it? Uh, mm. So I think kind of undoing some of that is really important, but then creating those safe and supportive environments um, just to, to help people um, talk about what they're going through, what their experience is really like. It's so much more prevalent now. We've been partnering with a great mm. organization, Kintsugi Hope, and I know that Patrick mm. is delivering a seminar as part of New Wine, our United mm. Breaks Out. Um, and um, their wellbeing groups are a really amazing resource, both for people in the community and in the church, to create one of those kind of supportive environments. Um, mm. And Mind and Soul Foundation, of course, are, are also doing an amazing job at resourcing the church and marrying up theology mm. with kind of medical practice, which I think is what we need. We need to mm. kind of bridge both, don't we, in response to this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm just aware as we, you know, as we, as we talk that we, we've, t we've touched on some amazing opportunities, haven't we, you know, and, and, and that's inevitable as we, as that we're going to be holding both these things together, these opportunities mm -hmm. and these challenges. And that's life. That's church. That's, that's normal, but particularly mm -hmm. at the moment, you know, and, and the whole question of what we're thinking about today is, you know, post covid what what does it look like for the local church and, and we've said there's these opportunities people are reaching out we've got the chance to access people in new ways and and yet at the same time we've got these enormous challenges in in church and society and i guess it's for us you know Dennis, thank you for that incredible reminder you know the gospel and the crown of thorns and this is what we do and the reminder to pray and you know, hold together don't we these these challenges uh, and we look for the opportunities um, we're, we're almost at the end of our time it has been um, such a joy to talk to you and I want to continue to do it for many more hours um, but I'm going to close by asking you all and you, I have warned you in advance that I'm going to ask you all this but I'm going to close by, by just saying what, what do you think Just only, only in a moment really there'll be lots more that you could say what do you think God is saying to the church at the moment it could be a sort of wake up call to us it could be an encouragement a, a, you know call to to action just what do you sense at the moment mm. I, don't, I don't know who wants to go first but i just want to reiterate the justice thing kate um justice flow like rivers it just feels like this is the ground that god's asking us to side on to side on the those who are oppressed those who are poor those who need help and make sure we're firm center there. You know, if we never ran another mm -hmm. festival again, but we did some amazing projects reaching into the community, would be a great movement. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that, um, uh, that it's about giving a voice to the voiceless and a place for those who feel they have no place to belong, uh, a place for their, their stories to be heard and to be held in the, the light and hope and love that is contained uh, within the gospel. Thanks. I, I was away on holiday last week and just sat watching the tide come and go on uh, Bridlington Harbour mm. and um, I was there at the time where the tide was changing and mm. it was shifting from coming in to going out and just watching the changes that were taking place within the current. And I just really felt the spirit say, you know, this is going to be the, this is where we are. So we've, we've, mm. we've been with the tide going in one direction, the tide's turning, it's going in a different direction, mm. but actually there's really choppy waters around and about and not afraid 
about those choppy waters that you know he will see us through he's the one who mm -hmm. commanded the storm to cease as i think we said earlier but just i think to be aware that in so many different ways there's choppiness around at the moment not to mm. be heartened mm. Mm. i think that um that courage thing is really sort of in there as soon as mm. you ask the question i think that the, the, with emphasis be brave kind of just here mm. You know, just be brave, be brave, mm. be brave, mm. you will flourish in that space. Mm. And actually to be able to do that will demonstrate mm. what courage looks like uh, to the world around us. And I think when they see uh, people courageous at work, sold out for, 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 for loving, sold out for Jesus, sold out for, for a world that's different from what's on now, they will be pointed to their savior very mm. easily. And so we, I think that's the wave, that's the, just be brave. Mm with exclamation mm. marks and as many hashtags mm. as you can sort of precede mm. it. Just be brave, Jen. Mm. You know. yeah. yeah, Dennis, I love that. Mm. And I couldn't mm. agree more. It is time for us to be courageous mm. um, as the people of God. And mm. we were created for such a time as this. Uh, I, I know I said mm. it in the beginning, but I do really believe that for this new world that we are surrounded by, there is a new wineskin for the church. So we have got yeah. to allow mm. God to stretch us to mm. dismantle what needs to be dismantled both internally and structurally to make us more supple and adaptable to the change as it comes mm. and yes to the justice thing um you know it, it's time for us to not just sing the songs but to live this on a whole new level to model mm. the change that we want to see on our planet and to model um, Jesus and to represent his heart for justice well uh, so it's a big amen from me uh, for, for what Richard shared as well mm -hmm. uh, but I think courage with a capital C and it's time mm -hmm. it's time we were made for this we were made for the uncharted waters we were made for the deep waters and although sometimes it might feel, feel like we're going to sink um, if we can keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and we can have courage then I just I honestly believe that this is an exciting time for us as the church Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, I've got um, I've got three things. I'll give them twenty seconds each. The first word was get ready. Um, a mm. lot of the church came into this time exhausted. A lot of the church leaders mm. came into this time exhausted. I felt from the, the beginning of March that God say, um, don't come out of COVID exhausted. Um, mm. So that, that yeah. don't don't yeah. be so activists. <laughs> don't be such don't be such rescuers that you come out exhausted. Mm. But, but mm. let them find that deep place of rest. Um, secondly. Mm saying to the church you don't need your leader you're building on Sundays as much as you thought um, mm. and that shift from being consumers to being mm. taking responsibility uh, yeah. ownership that decentralization that Nikki talked about earlier mm. I think uh, the spirit is saying that to the church and um, the final thing was uh, just a word from from Luke chapter 4 which I've been studying which is at the beginning of the chapter Jesus goes into the wilderness led by the spirit comes out mm. in the power of the spirit the encounter yeah. overcoming the enemy with the word of God but at the end of the chapter he then goes into Nazareth and into Capernaum and he heals and he sets deliverance and he speaks in the synagogue and he goes to rub nearly gets killed by the, his hometown and at the end of the chapter it says uh, Jesus got up early to go to the wilderness and it's the same word mm. and it's a reminder that when it gets busy again when we come out of this time again mm. keep coming back because there's been such richness of depth of growing in god in this time that yeah. he's going to say don't lose that don't let it be just for a season mm. that you come and spend time with yeah. me but keep coming back to those wilderness keep coming back to what i've taught you in this time because mm. it will sustain you as life gets fuller again those are the <laughs> things yeah. i've got Good. Rich, I honestly think there's probably been sin and sanctity in equal measure. You know, we talk about a lot of increase in prayer, but I reckon there's been a lot of increase in sin as well. And mm -hmm. I just have the sense of God saying, if you're listening and you think, actually, my life's got more screwed up <laughs> during this time, it hasn't got better, I'm not more holy, more prayerful, then it, it's always the right day to come back to him. You know, if you've got a whole load of sin mm -hmm. going on in you now, um, I know I certainly have had at times during COVID, today's the day to come back to him he, he loves you and he calls you yeah. to mm -hmm. him he, he names it and he sees it and don't let mm -hmm. shame get in the way come back to him now mm -hmm. thank you beautiful mm -hmm. That's a good place to finish, Richard. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you to all of you for your wisdom, for your time, for all that you've shared, uh, the encouragements, the challenges. It's been a really um, a stimulating time for me to just hear from all of you. So thank you um, so much, everybody, um, for being with us.